ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my, I think, 17th uh, podcast. And it's an absolute honor and pleasure to have a dear friend, somebody I admire very, very much, and a massive influence in the region as my guest, uh, Asil Atta. Welcome. Thank you did so I, much did for I having me. you pronounce your name right? Yes, Asil Atta. Uh, Asil. Asil, Asil Atta. So yeah. where, is your, where does your name originate from? Uh, so Asil Middle Eastern. I'm originally from the Middle East. I'm Iraqi and I have some Indian in me. So Asil means noble. Asil. I, so I do apologize. Asil. Asil, right? Asil. yeah. So um, Iraq. Yes. When was the last time you went there? Were you, where were you born? I was born in Iraq, in Baghdad. Uh, I was born and I was there for a year. I'm not going to tell you when I was born because that would be saying way too much. Well, who cares when you left after a year, right? So you don't remember yeah, much. Yeah, no, I, I went back for a year in 1979 to 1980. Wow. Uh, only. Wasn't there a war? No, it came in the, eight, the war with yeah, Iran started I, in the 80s. Exactly. Right? So I, I left just before that. Okay, cool. But most of my life has been UK. Since I was Whereabouts in the UK? So it started in Manchester, <laughs> which is where we obviously yes, were exactly, up the road from exactly. each other. Exactly, Disbury uh, and Yeah, Burnham. and, and Cheadle and all that mm -hmm. good stuff. But then the latter part is London, basically. Between London and the US. That's Did your where parents we're move to uh, Manchester also, or you just went as a student? No, uh, well, well, I went to Manchester when I was three years old. So okay, I was so really your parents young. lived in Manchester? Yeah, yeah. So my father was studying his PhD in solar energy in Salford wow. University. Wow. Um, but my parents left the Middle East in the 50s, so they went straight to California. Yes. Uh, and my father studied in the University of Southern California, so he's a Trojan hardcore. Um, and then they had half of us in the U.S., and then I was in Iraq with my other sister. But they, they left Middle East many years ago. Because I know that, for people who don't know you, you've had the most amazing corporate run, a co corporate yeah. ladder career. Yeah. And is that something you learned from your parents? Yeah, look, I think Darish, my, my parents, I love my mom and dad. They're a huge influence. Unfortunately, they're no longer in my I'm life, sorry. but they're in my heart. Idea home. So, yeah, I mean, dad was a pioneer, you know, one of the top three in the world in the 70s for solar energy. So wow. he taught us a lot. He taught us about ambition, intelligence, but most importantly, humility. Really very humble guy for what he achieved. Um, and then my mother was a powerhouse, you know, very empowered, beautiful. She was the Indian background. So your mom no, was... my mom is actually Persian background. Oh, really? Iraqi. Okay. Yeah, my father is the Indian side. It's from my really? dad, from my right. great grandma. Right. She's uh, Indian. Wonderful. So quite a heated combination, but huge influence. So my mother and father inspired me and do every single day. Amazing. You know, very strong woman, working woman, high achiever. Um, so all the creative and design part of my fashion career comes from my mom's creative side because she was an interior designer, etc. So I get that. And then discipline and structure I get from my father. And then they both together give me values and humility and ethics. So amazing, amazing, amazing couple. And the, you have siblings? I do. So I have uh, three, two other sisters and a brother. Uh, so are they all professionals? Are they all Yeah, so, so Vic is a rock star. I mean, Vic is, uh, he, he's incredible, very charismatic. He's uh, a businessman, retired now, but probably one of the coolest guys on the planet. Um, and so Vic is in, in the UK. My sister, uh, my older sister, she's an architect and she's one of the most renowned ceramists in the world, actually. Wow. Very, so she's very creative. Uh, they're all creative, so engineering, and then uh, my my middle sister is most creative, but she's a pharmacist, so that she's the one who wanted to go into sort of medicine, etc. But uh, but pretty much we're all in the arts, architecture. It's a very smart um, family. Yeah, we're super smart, alhamdulillah. But we're also very. Um, I think it's 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 ambition and smarts, you know. Yeah, yeah, alhamdulillah. Do you keep in touch? Of course. Oh my god. So you're close knit family, right? Although yeah. you spread they're, all over they're the world. They're everything to me. Oh my gosh, yeah. They it's inspire wonderful. me every day, of wonderful. course. Yeah, alhamdulillah. So what did you study at university and then did you go down that path? Yeah. After? So I graduated high school when I was 15. So just to give you a background of when I keep saying ambition. So um, I was in American school and I, I realized one day by chance when I was speaking to my older friends that we could earn credits in an American system. So when I clocked onto that, I was like, oh, if I study really hard and do my IB and earn credits, I could graduate Good. three years ahead of time. Wow. So I did, I worked so hard, Darish, and, and I graduated at 15. So I was a 15 year old in university um, in London. So very young. And then when I started, I studied interior design. Did you fit in? 
Oh, completely. Yeah, like because 18 at 15, looking at you going, no, no. Because at 15, I was like a 21 year old, very wow. mature. Wow. Um, very, my head was together. I knew what I wanted to do, you know, always kind of in that mindset. So I blended right in. And then when I started the first year, I'm like, you know what? Oh, this is an American university. I can uh, work twice as hard and graduate with my me. bachelor's. In, Excuse me. Bless you. That's and amazing. in like two years instead of You're four. Kidding me. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to study twice as hard. And I graduated at 17, university 18. at 18. No. Yeah. And so when I graduated at 18 and all of my peers, you know, they were still in, uh, you know, their second year of university. And yes. whatever, so. what did you study? Interior design. Okay. And then I practiced interior design for a good few years. I had my own business in at 19 in the UK. I was like, I'm going to do this. So how did you get your customers at age 19? Well, uh, through a lot of hard work. You know, I would back then, of course, you had no social media. You had mm -hmm. didn't even have any internet. You, know, you had nothing. You had good old fashioned letters that you'd post. You had magazines. So you did your own marketing. You made your own phone calls. Completely, completely. And you just, you know, it's you, you drive, you walk around, you get on a bus and you go and pitch. So that's what I did, you know, and then you have magazines like Vogue and, and interiors, you know, uh, homes and gardens and all that in the back of them, they'd have all their client list or interior designers. And so that's how I started. And then I um, got married very young and stopped my career for a little bit as well before yes. I sort of really went back into it full speed. But that's yeah, amazing. So transition from being a housewife. Yeah. Was that a big deal? Because you've been so driven and ran your own business. For how long did you stop working to become yeah, a... Yeah, not too long. I mean, I when I was pregnant, I became very ill. So, uh, you know, I, I had a lot of problems and I'm very lucky to survive with my dog, you know, my kids as well. So they were very premature and we were in hospital for months. And, you know, so that was a really tough time. And then I spent um, a good few years with my older daughter now you know um, going through a lot together with her and then actually had not intended really to go back into into my career I See, really because, because of you the, were so I, focused in your personal life you didn't even miss it really no I didn't yeah. and it had totally consumed me and you know on a personal level it was a huge shock and trauma in my life so I was very um, you know very connected to my mm -hmm. child who'd gone through a lot with me mm -hmm. So um, I hadn't intended to go back and, and actually it's her kindergarten teacher because every day, you know, she had so much problems as she was, you know, and, you know, challenges because she was 28 weeks when I had her and 900 grams, like this size. So by the time we got her to sort of kindergarten, I'd sit there, I'd take her to school and then I'd sit there all day making sure that if she needed anything, because I was... Uh, had a lot of issues torture isn't it as a parent yeah of course because I was you know very is she okay can she you know she gonna have to come down the stairs she had some walking and, and, and is she okay now alhamdulillah She's, yes yeah. yeah yeah but uh, so it's her it's her actual kindergarten uh, teacher that saw me one day and came down and said you know I see you sitting here every day for the last year worrying and worrying and she said and now this is actually you know affecting your daughter in school she can't walk because I carried her everywhere I carried her everywhere for four years she needs to be more independent so she's like you 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 know you're now re really affecting your daughter's life you need to go get a job you know your, your family are way more relaxed with her your husband you are hindering her so I suggest get out leave her alone to sort of grow naturally with the right surrounding yes. and not you on top of her the whole time. So it felt like tough love, I guess, right? But yeah, because you I weren't mean, there for her all the time, but no, but I needed to better. in order to, for her to actually, yeah. you know, develop without yes. all of that stress around her, you know, so How old then is she now? Um, she's now 28. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Habibti, yeah. So, uh, so that's why I went back into work really. Um, and then I decided, well, where am I going to go and what am I going to do? Um, so the best place on the planet was Harrods, of course. I thought if I'm going to go back into it, I want to go. But you lived in Manchester at the time? No, or? in London. Oh, you no, moved Manchester, to London. I was there just for a few years okay. as we were growing okay. up as a kid. But okay. uh, So you went to Harrods as, as, as what? So I started with them as a sales associate. Yeah. Okay. Shop floor. Shop floor. Amazing. Yeah, because I thought 
well, how do I hone my skills? You know, I've not worked for a few years and I knew they had an amazing training program and they turn you into Herodians because they had specific standards and luxury and it was the only one place. So they're going to yes. invest in you to yes. be the best at any level. And you have the top demanding clients. Top who want, demanding who want clients, experts in the field. Really luxury, unique product and you have to be best in class. I mean, thousands, 20,000 a month, you know, going through the doors of that recruitment office. So to wow. be picked to be one of the 3000 that work there when they have hundreds of thousands a year from all over the world. Yes. So I, you know, went to their recruitment office and filled in the form and sat there, you know, hoping that there were thousands of other people, obviously. So, um, so I had my interview and, you know, smart, ambitious, um, no experience and in that sort of field yes. and uh, the lady was really impressed the recruiter it was just for a sales associate job but she's like you know you're very interesting of course I'd worked in interiors before yes so she said you know can you come in and see the sort of shop floor manager tomorrow I think you know we could really use someone like you and, and that's when I started learning from grassroots that was intentional I needed to do that yes customer experience engagement yes. at know. the highest level at the highest level yeah. So how long were you there and then what happened? So I was back and forth uh, between Harrods. Harrods is like a, 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 an obsession, a love. Like once you go to Harrods and you're part Alfie, of the yes. owner, he was, yes. wasn't he? Yes, I was meet so, him? of course, I worked very closely with him. The press in the UK made him sound like an... See, I get really very mm. intense about that because I, you know, I, I went back and forth with Harrods in different positions throughout yes. my career. and. The latter one, I worked very closely with him, and he was one of the most inspirational mentors I've ever had. I mean, wow. he was so, listen. At the end of the day, he created an iconic. That store was falling apart at the seams, True. True. and he invested so much in the physical structure and these. He was such a creative genius and so disruptive. You know, creating the Egyptian Hall. I mean, I was doing a talk. Egyptian Hall didn't exist. Of course not. You're kidding me. Egyptian Hall. I thought he just came and put his face on the pharaohs. Oh my God. The whole not well. <laughs> that was so old and damp, that building. And he spent millions renovating piece by piece of that. Wow. It's phenomenal how much he invested. People and don't give him the credit. No. At, give him zero no. credit. And so they, much. They passion. say that he's a lunatic almost, really. You know what? He's an eccentric genius. And if you don't understand, people call me a loony. I'd like to think I'm a genius. But you know what? I, I, I think he definitely gets a bad rap. When you enter the world of Harrods, he created the magic. It's magical. Wow. Uh, really, wow. It, it was is. theater. Yeah. It was drama. I mean, you know, he was about creating the best experience. And the most important thing I learned from him was that every day, Darish, every day, he would walk five floors and personally greet 3,000 employees, every day, twice, right? Greet 3,000 employees and then spend at least two minutes with every customer Talk. engaging. Not one child, he had pockets full of sweets constantly and he yes. would stop and speak to every customer, give sweets to the kids, and understand what is it you need. They would be going up to him taking, you know, photos or autographs or complaining about their furniture. And he knew everybody's name. Wow. All of us. Every single day. He would have been in his sixties now, because he's well into his eighties now. Not, so. Yeah. I mean he oh I'm talking now nineteen ninety six and so you 2001. were there when Diana passed away. You were at the store. You yes. were working there. Yeah, that was really tough times. So, do you see him? Do you notice any changes? Oh in my him? God! I mean, I think it was shocking for everyone. It's interesting when that happened. Um, it was that one moment when everybody now, you know, we 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 see the Kennedy assassination. We see that, and we you remember don't where quite you were. Mm. Yeah, it's one of those moments when you know exactly, and it shocked the world and it was very tough. Did people him. know that um, his son was dating Prince Diana? Yeah. Were they coming to the store or anything? It was, but it was so sad. People knew I that mean, they were dating. Of course he had, you know, he had a visual for his son. It was very difficult, very tough times, very sad. He still sleeps, I believe, uh, in the back garden of his castle. I think. 
think. I don't know. Yeah, I near mean, the, 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 I think it's the tomb of his son is in this Yeah, it's grounds, so difficult it's the, for him. Um, and that was a very tough time. And, you know, the fired, as far as I'm concerned, was an amazing person. And in my life, huge influence. He taught me everything from emotionally engaging with your teams, to caring about your customers, to creating brand experience, you know? Wow. Creating brand experience. Wow. Um, and so he knew all this. He was a businessman from Egypt, right? Yeah, so, he was a businessman. Uh, and that was his first venture outside yeah, Egypt. Yeah, yeah. It was amazing. Every to day enter the was market theater. in Europe, mm -hmm. highest revenue store, highest yeah. quality and standards and brand. Yeah, really, truly remarkable. And like I said, you know, the time that I had with Harrods um, and the investment personally that I got from just understanding you know, I, mean, I think one time it was amazing. Of course, the Harrods sales were so famous, right? And all the, yes. you know, the amazing show that he put on yes. and the cues that would it wrap used to be around. On, on TV. Oh, God, yeah. People would be, like, be queuing the sales up for days. Are on, there's a Harrods sale. Oh, the yeah. Harrods sale was yeah. a very different. You'd have sleeping bags and yes, people outside. coming in from all over the world, sleeping outside the store in queues and queues so that the minute the doors open, they can come flooding yeah, in. It exactly. was a mega deal. And the show that he put on and the, the A-listers he'd bring yes. to open it, it's drama. He knew it's exactly theater. what he was doing. Oh yeah, complete, complete, you know. Um, so that, that's why I have a huge respect because who is it today that creates this drama and this experience? Very little, the world's very touch? different. No, no, gosh, not for years. Though I was in touch with his daughter maybe six years ago, uh, who's uh, wonderful also. But, um, yes. but no, yeah, so that's sort of how my career started. Mm. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, very Just going cool. back to the uh, Diana situation. Mm. I was in Scotland, Edinburgh, and um, I was watching TV and it said there's been a crash, unfortunately, mm. Dodie had passed and the driver, yeah. but Diana was alive. So, um, and then it was Robin Cook who was in the Far East. I think yeah. Tony Blair had just been voted in as a Labour uh, Prime Minister. And they said, Robin Cook's canceled the flight. And I phoned my, one of my friends, I said, they're gonna kill her. <gasps> I said, they're gonna kill her. He goes, well, what are you talking about? She was live on radio oh. and TV. I said, they're gonna kill her. And then about an hour later, they said she's dead. Mm. So that night I flew from Edinburgh to Paris. Gosh, I went Did to the you? crash site, yeah. Really? I, went, I took, uh, had my three-year-old son with me. I took him to the crash site in uh, mm. Paris. So tough. Yeah, so and, tough. and honestly, I, I really do believe that it wasn't an accident. Yeah, well, we'll never know, right? There's so no. many conspiracy theories. All, all I know for a fact is she was a remarkable person mm. and a huge loss, you know? Yeah, Such an still iconic. Sad. Still sad. Still sad, yeah. yeah. And you still remember that. And downstairs moment. at Harris, they had the, the, the wine, the glass of wine that they there was Did a they? memorial to him know. yes it was the ring that he'd got her yes and yes. the glass yeah, of they, wine they that had, they shared that they, evening for a while. they so still sad. do i think they still have oh they kept it so it must be on the yeah in, part yeah. of the agreement if you sell it to qatar they have to keep that in the uh, i don't know i don't Maybe know i haven't to. been to harrods for a number of oh, years wow. actually yeah. so how long were you there so uh, on and off i think four years something like that um, and then uh, you're, you and then basically yeah so when i was in harrods um i generally always like to do really big things and you know always looking at the bigger picture so I did a lot for that store and the departments that I was in and because of the work that I was doing I guess I caught some headhunters uh, eyes yeah so I got a phone call from a remarkable uh, lady called Vanessa Denza Vanessa Denza is like the grand dam of luxury recruiters and she uh, you know sat on the British Fashion Council and she's recruited some of the amazing creative directors and she's very wonderful uh so vanessa you know quite quite old at the time still I'm very old today love you vanessa but <laughs> you were so she's very hot and she's like oh i see you. i've seen some fantastic work that you're doing and, 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 and i've got this amazing position and so it was for karen millen and wow. so they were looking for someone to come in. In those days, it was very fresh, right? Karen, Karen Millen? Was new oh to my the gosh. Yes. Karen Millen was. She was still running herself. She was right? still running yeah. herself in the most beautiful studios in, uh, in Surrey, or what was it? Kent, Kent, exactly. So, um, so, yeah, so they were looking actually to grow the brand, expand it. They, they had just gotten investment. 
So they were looking for someone to come in and actually they just bought Whistles, which was another one of my favorite brands in the UK, really iconic. So they were looking for sort of a creative head um, for the accessories department to build that and and to bring the teams and everything. So you were heading the creative department for the accessories For department. accessories and licensing, for, so footwear, um, you know, soft accessories, bags, leather goods, all of that stuff, yeah. So, so what that job entail? And then you said uh, licensing. Does that mean you were in charge of exporting it or? Well, no, we create licensed product for export. So that basically okay. that job was putting together creative design teams and coming up with a collection seasonally. So every season we launch, you know, they had a uh, creative director for clothing um, and I worked with them on but the But Karen Miller always headed the team. So yes, when she I joined, always had an influence. She, well, when I joined was actually her last year with the company because they bought her out. Mm -hmm. And so that's why they brought me into that role because they had bought these two brands, the investment group. So Karen unfortunately left okay. um, the business, but you know, she had developed a wonderful brand, one of the first luxury brands in the UK. Yes, I, I mean, really for her tailoring and her detail. And so, yeah, so she left the business and I stayed with them. What, what that job entailed was traveling nine months out of 12 to China, to India, living in factories, working with my creative design team. Creative and leaving the family wasn't a big issue to you? No, no. I mean, for me, um, it was, I'd had another daughter at that and went through the same issues I had with the first oh. one. <laughs> so that went a little bit more complicated. So actually it was good to have the opportunity to leave because I yes. learned from the first one. So it was very difficult, but um, you know, it was needed for their sake as yes. well. You know? yes. Amazing. Um, and also- Those days would have been just the beginning of the internet. So yes, it was. You were you were going to places that people in Europe didn't even know existed, right? Because yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, literally, you couldn't Google throwing... it and find out where you are. No. So no. those connections was massive for you. Yes, right? I mean, landing in Gonzao, <laughs> in the yeah. middle of nowhere. Yes, uh, it, with my team. I went there two years ago, and it was scary. So imagine this is now 20 we're talking years twenty-five ago. Yeah. years yeah. ago or whatever, twenty years ago, and it was pretty intense. Mm. I mean, Hong Kong was okay. It's not yes. like chicken feet, but yes. I could deal with Hong Kong and got really ill. But get in the middle of China. Yeah. Oh my God. It, that's a whole other episode. We have to yes. do my adventures in you China 20 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so I did spend a lot of time in India, which I loved and I still do every, every year. I spend maybe four or five times in India. I guess right. part of you still belongs, right? Yeah. Yeah. Though, if somebody asks you where you're from, what do you say? You say I'm a glo say I'm global Iraqi. citizen? No, I no, Iraqi. I definitely say I'm Iraqi mm -hmm. because I'm very proud of heritage. obviously my heritage, 100%. And you know, I guess if you look at percentages, probably 80% is, is Iraqi, right? So Iraqi definitely. I mean, global citizen is interesting when people say that. At one point, I think if you'd asked me maybe two, three years ago, four, it was cool to be a global citizen. Yes. But today I think, no, I'm really proud and I'm very specific mm, mm, of, of where I come from because it's influenced a lot of who I am. So, yes, you know. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah I left Iran when I was very young, but yeah. I'm still deep down inside Iranian. Although I have a British passport, blah, blah. But yeah, I'm still but Iranian. Nevertheless, yeah. and you need to have those grassroots, mm, mm. right? At some stage I was lost, literally. Mm -hmm. I went to some courses and my nickname is funny enough, and none of these courses knew each other. My nickname was lost. So You're I'm joking. Like, mm, the universe is sending <laughs> me a message. It's sending you a message. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. hysterical. Amazing. Right? Yeah. So you you can relate to that. But now, definitively, of course, I'm Iraqi. I'm very proud. Most recently, by yeah. the way, this is fascinating. Your career. Most recently, yeah. you're going to uh, in, on CEO roles, right? Yes, in the Middle the East. Yeah. The last twelve years. So what yeah. brought you here? Yeah. And, and, and so, the, the kind of the companies you work with, I love mm -hmm. to hear the challenges you had. Yeah, again, that'd probably be another episode, but why did I come here? By the way, here? you're welcome. I... We can have episode one, two, three. <laughs> yeah, right, the journey in. But um, so I came out here the first time, I think in 2000, okay. um, and where there was very little out here and I loved it. I loved it because actually the reason we came out is because it was quiet and I was getting away from my crazy life and yes. you know fashion and in Europe and everything. So this was a destination where I'd bring my kids 
to disappear from the world and, and hope that they can relate to, you know, as close as their heritage. Yes. And then at the time when I'd come out, I was understanding the changes that were happening in the region. And I knew that there were these great groups that are establishing themselves and yes. these luxury and everything was new. So I always had an affinity to here, but never yes. really was, it wasn't on my mind to come out here. Yes. And I was in a project in Barcelona, um, working based between Barcelona and New York. And uh, I'm always a sucker for a headhunter. I mean, if they're good, you know, they always, uh, you know, they always catch me. So another very good headhunter called and she said, I know that you've been in love with the Middle East and Dubai specifically for years. And I have a great opportunity with a luxury group, Altair, there. And at the time I was doing a wonderful project in Barcelona and also going through a divorce. So it's not the best of times. And I was like, not now, I can't be packing. I need to go back to London and sort Don't of settle it. for a yes. while. Really not now. And then, you know, my husband said, why don't you, you've been harping on about Dubai forever. So why don't you just go for a weekend? Let's go and meet, you know, you never know. So we literally came out and uh, for a couple of days and I met um, Khalid al Tayyar and then Shireen, their CEO at the time. So those days and just to... to, to founders spoke to you oh yeah of yeah. course the very different time you know yes. very family very small you know big established group but yes i you know very Still much family. communicating okay. very family very family that's at the core value so yeah so i met them and i fell in love with what they were doing and this excitement and then they were signing you know bloomingdale's and they were looking to expand and there's a lot so of they had energy bloomingdale's 20 years ago they were talking to well them. no this was now 14 13 years ago 13 years ago wow, where they were you're signing right. just before they had uh, harvey dubai Nicks. mall they had had harvey yes. nichols in yes. 2006 so Correct. that would be but they were looking at signing that and other wow. brands. It was a very exciting time for the group. Wow. And they needed someone to come and sort of work on their corporate side, on their structures, if they're buying and merchandising, negotiate agreements, take a part of the luxury division and sort of run that. So that's what I did. You know, um, I came out here and then I stayed with them. Not more i mean if you look at my career you see i have two years two years two years 18 months two years um again that's, that's your, the ambition that's your right? right yeah it's because i want to learn right uh -huh. and, and and i want to understand every it's facet to do with boredom 100 percent to do with boredom okay. and the, the the older i got and the more experience i had this this it's this span was becoming shorter, 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 and, shorter, yeah, shorter, yeah, shorter and shorter yeah so i i stuck with them for about a year and a half and then uh, got a call from Majid Fatayim, which is a big group here as well. And they were looking for a uh, CEO to come and sort of turn around their business. And, um, you know, same thing, look at their structure, people, team. So then I joined them for four years and that was a record. Is, is this the same part as the, the malls? Yeah, they're the yeah. property owners and okay. they had a very they big have the fashion brands. business. Yeah, indeed, yeah, they still have, haven't they? they yeah, still of have course, brands. of course. Um, but, uh, the fashion business wasn't so out there at the time. Yes. Everybody knew them for their property. Yes. So my role was to come and sort of, you know, put it to the forefront and then negotiate some new brands for them. So, uh, you know, one of my greatest accomplishments was bringing Abercrombie & Fitch to the region, really? which is very cool. Very I was there cool. last week, beautiful clothes. Yeah, yeah, really very, very cool brand. And uh, that was an experience in itself, you know. But so I was with math for four years. And then I decided I'd had enough. Like this was now 20 years of corporate fashion and I've done so much that I thought, you know what, I'm going to quit this and do what I absolutely love. Um, which is uh, supporting new generations of talent, you know, uh, really mentoring, coaching. I've got a great eye, great eye for spotting and really finding the gems in the industry. So I went back to London and I set up two businesses and one of them was Lead Associates, which is sort of advising groups of how to enter new markets, how to structure their business. Uh, nuances culturally when you're entering in a region and all of that yes. and then my passion is salt uh, which I set up which is supporting all local talent so salt is a business now that was set up in 2015 and basically 
it's very cool because we scout talent from all over the world whether you're you know an artist or a slam poet or you're a designer a fashion designer a creative and we find these talents and we basically coach and mentor them to understand how to become brands how to become successful entrepreneurs yes. you know when you're a creative you want to run the world but you don't quite understand the, business the boring things, business yeah, exactly. bit commercially how do i potentialize myself so that's what salt does and salt also sort of still tours. going salt still, still going, going and we have a really big mega event in saudi coming up mm -hmm. in a few uh in, in about a month inshallah where we it's, it's a series of, you know, we have a program called Salt Talks where we interview influencers, bloggers, achievers, and yes. bring inspirational people. We have Salt the Runway, which we have runway show for all the designers. We have, you know, the Salt exhibitions where designers come in and, you know, they showcase their collections. And then we have Salt workshops where we do two day workshops with these young entrepreneurs or corporates, big groups will send their, you know, best in class if any of our listeners want to look at SALT or send an application form or to join... Yeah, if they or, want to be part of how SALT. Do, how do they do that? So they need to go on my website. So it's uh, www.essilahtar.com and then they go into SALT, which is one of the tabs. And into SALT, it'll link you to what you need to do. That's amazing. So, yeah. And this is all over the Middle East? Yeah, so basically so we pop up and we tour. So no, no, we, we're doing tours all over. So it would be throughout the GCC and actually SALT is also in Europe, SALT goes, so it travels, it's just a traveling sort of event. Amazing. Yeah, it's very cool. And you there with everyone? I'm Every always event. champing, always, always, because I, you know, want to empower the teams. Obviously, I talk a lot, you know, being there with these new gen is very important. Cool. And then I bring other very, um, very inspiring industry experts as well to sort of coach and mentor them from all over the world we'll bring them to this one place that's why you haven't asked me once to attend any of these. well i kind of did but that was last time i said we have an event in saudi you ignored me don't Unavailable. you turn this on when is it me. when is it when is it it's going to be first week of march inshallah so you promise no you're going to be there no if you invite me I will all be right there. done deal yes actually you love in, it 400 I'm in, kids in i'm in india until 6th of march See, there you go. So making yeah. excuses. So don't put that on me. I'm gonna but let's finalize the day. I, did I where are you about, going? I'm going to a tantric course. You're going where? Tantric. Are you? Yes. Oh. I'm going. Really? And I don't mind the public knowing. Okay. There you are. Well, that's, that's that are. then. I can't so, say no to that one, can I? <laughs> so how long are you going for? Uh, 10 days. Oh, wow. End of February till. Uh, so six you're just to living the months. life, man. So here I am, like I'm just working taking my myself buns to the next off, level. And you're just like to the next level. That's I'm going to be a higher spiritual being. That's are you? Is yeah, that right? Absolutely. So you're going to come floating into our workshop. Absolutely, okay. with my breathing and everything. Yeah, so I love to. Please <laughs> yeah, let me know the dates. Definitely, I love to attend. Definitely. So um, yeah. Where are you going? Where, where, where is the? Where is your path now? I know that you're contributing a lot. You're helping lots of entrepreneurs. Yeah. I heard about your um, talk show. Yes. Yes. Tell me about where you're going. Tell me about um, yeah. Okay, so Share. one thing I know for, a little, but I don't want to dilute. Yeah, also. I mean, what's interesting is probably if you listen to me, you think I'm such an extrovert and I'm so easy to talk to. I'm not. I'm a total, absolute introvert freak. I have huge OCD and just want to. I mean, I live in the desert, so I want to know why parking. What happened? Parking? Because you, no, I want to know about no, the parking that's just issue. That's a whole other thing right. because that's the for episode the, for the of listeners OCD. and the viewers, right? Yeah. You were parking outside my office and paying for a ticket. Right. When I said we have a multi story car park free of charge, and you went, No, I'm OCD. And, that's and I didn't it. get it. So okay. explain so what, what happened. I can't because this is really joking aside, you must do an OCD episode. But I, I tell you, it's okay. such an important subject. Okay. And I'm sure all of your you know, viewers, listeners are going to relate. Okay. And then we talk about OCD okay. because I joke about it and I say it's OCD. Of course, it's not a joke. It's a real, real challenge for people. But I couldn't associate car parks with OCD. I know. OCD, so and, you know, that's the nature of OCD. Is it because of the way you line it's, up or let, line up against it's the It's a whole car? bunch of stuff, Darius. Don't try to get it out of me. You're not going to. And I know that you have to leave in about 10 minutes. So we don't have to. I love. For okay, own. that's the next. That's the fourth episode. <laughs> okay. Tell me about your. Um, so yeah, new, so new my, my extrovert. So yeah. yeah, like I was saying, you know, I'm, I'm not very comfortable because I'm a very private person. So most of what I do, so I don't have Insta. My team forced me to set it up a few months ago. Um, the only social media I have is LinkedIn because it's professional. So you B2B. won't find me on Facebook. There's really, you'll find me in press or 
PR, but not really um, out there myself. And it's taken me about 25 years to figure that I'm, you know, I influence a lot, especially women, you know, and I influence a new generation because of the nature of how I work. So it took me a while to figure out, well, how do I really continue influencing, but more vocal because, you know, you're blessed with a talent, you're blessed with, you know, achieving through hard work and merit a lot. And I'm desperately one for sharing knowledge and knowledge transfer and, and leaving a legacy is very important for me. But you can't do that without having a voice. I mean, Absolutely. you simply and can't. And reaching out to the masses, you, right? Yes, exactly. If you want the days are one to one. You're not going to reach out to someone. No, and, and legacy means social impact. Social mm. means community. It means people. So the only way for me, because I, you know, I have a number of personalities, I guess, under this turban and different heads that I work with. Maybe it's because I'm a Gemini, but uh, so I. By the way, have you always worn a turban? Always? Or no, I I started. I covered. Uh, 2014 so okay. and due to religious years. reasons yes. or okay. yes yes exactly okay. exactly um, so yeah so basically the only way for me is to create an alter ego or the eccentric side of me so that I can separate me the asila thought private person. is it awkward for you to do that or is it easy to split the personality to the extrovert. No, it's very easy. Wow. Yeah, it's like you just black make a and decision, white. and that's it. Yeah, right? you're in that zone. I'm very much black and white, so I don't have this. No, it's very easy. Because I've seen the promo video, you look amazing, and you do look like an extrovert. Yeah, yeah, I look like a nut job. You know, artistic, creative, yeah, loud, fun. and that's very fun, very quirky, very mm -hmm. cool, which is not the real me. The real me is very private, very quiet. So what's the, what's the brand called? So, uh, so the brand is called Turban Thinker okay. uh, because I have different thoughts and I represent different verticals in my thoughts. So mm. uh, yeah, so it's a talk show basically that we're going to be launching sometime at the end of March. And Turban Thinker is about inspiring, empowering a new generation to get off their phones and scrolling and looking at the social media where we represent a fake world with not no, no reality, gone, no yeah, reality, exactly. right? So the only way to communicate to this generation is through a digital medium that they will look at for seven minutes. Yes. But the content there shows real people doing amazingly inspiring things from all over the world, their age, that are achieving. So you're going to limit the interviews or the programs to seven minutes? Yeah, so seven minutes will be on digital wow. media and then they can watch the full interview on our channel okay. and then they can listen to it on the podcast. But the seven minutes goes across all channels to get their attention. And so we cover everything from lifestyle, fashion, beauty, social responsibility, all the different. Yeah. And we travel you know, around interviewing wonderful people like yourself who've got great stories to tell and hopefully inspire this generation to not just search for their answers in Google, to awesome. actually get up and create businesses and be passionate and be empowered to achieve. And they can be successful. They don't, and not everyone on the planet today has to be a tech genius and create an yes. app, right? It doesn't, the world is much more realistic than that. So that's sort of the, the, the show content. And uh, what are the biggest challenges that you face when you're in the marketplace talking to young people in this region what are the top re challenges that they have is it mindset no especially make let's talk about women yeah okay mm -hmm. because that's an area that you know you're quite famous for you know successful sure. business yeah so what are the three biggest challenges that women face and what would you advise let's say top two or three that what you would advise them to I, I don't know if it's challenges you know i think when we look at ourselves we look at ourselves as people I, I like to think so when I when I talk about women empowerment, I generally talk about empowerment, men and women. I don't like to be too specific because it's not about feminism. Absolutely. <laughs> Life is a balance and I would be nowhere without my husband supporting me in everything that I do. It's an equal share. Yes. So, you know, I, it's not cha the challenge actually lies with the women who perceive there to be an, a, an issue. Yes. I think that's one of the biggest barriers. Yes, of course, today, especially in the corporate world, it is male dominated and yes. there are challenges to yes. get, break the glass ceiling. Um, and believe you me, I've you know experienced those and heard many stories, but mm. it's up to us to break the barriers. Do you have to work twice as hard as a woman? To be accepted I've never world. worked twice as hard because I work 10 times hard, harder than most people I know. Mm -hmm. So it's an innate thing, right? 
So I don't work to prove a point. I work. But I notice that hasn't slowed down with age. You still have so what much passion. What are you saying? Are you, you just insulted me on your no, program. No, because you said as I'm you old. got older, the, the window got shorter. Remember, oh it was your God. words, okay, right? Okay, yeah. okay, yes. So yes, as you yes. got at 50, older, at 50. as you got older, yeah. I'm older than you, so. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay, so, yeah. that's good. So as, as yeah. we have got older. Yes. That hasn't diminished your energy to work My hard. My energy and hasn't, but mm. I tell you what, I'm knackered. I mean, you know, at 30 like, I like sleeping at right, 3 o'clock and I'm just, having a nap. You don't understand. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I shouldn't be fessing this, but I can't survive without my nap. nap. Oh my yeah. God, I feel like. I've been told this about the diet. It's what we eat. Of course. <laughs> and when we eat. So we have to do a fitness challenge between us. That's episode five. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do a fitness That's challenge. Episode and five. let's try to get, because. To be continued. Next. To be continued. Next. Totally. And the second thing. <laughs> We have to do it. Second challenge that you face in young people. So, second challenge. Nice, uh, nice move from the subject. Uh, when it comes again, to food and I diet. Think, and I think it's the... <laughs> next. I think it's the challenge. It's, it's, again, it's not a challenge with young people. I think it's trying to bridge the communication. And that's the whole point of Turban Thinker. Because actually, most of who I interview are quite young. And I'm old. Older. So it shows that actually wiser. it's kind of wiser and all the experience. But then I, I'm, I'm totally gelling with your mindset. I get your world. Why don't you get a little bit of mine and together maybe it could be a great place. So I think, you know, trying to get these young generation to understand that it's not just this, that the world that they live in, which is social media led, is not the real world. It's like an alternate reality. Because most of what's out there, you know, when you're looking at the influencers or bloggers, you know, everything is plastic fantastic, they have incredible jets and everybody has amazing life and they wake up in the morning and everything is wonderful. It's not like that. Life is not like that. They have bad days. And they have of tough Of course. Days. And you know what my daughter was saying, imagine if you get up in the morning and say, Oh, I just got fired from my job. Nobody does that. But imagine if Insta was full of the real truth, yes. you know, then they wouldn't have followers. But it's again it's about balance, you know. They it's not the world, it's a lot of pressure on youth. Yes. to have the perfect life, the perfect face, the perfect this, and it's not like that. The real world is not perfect. Yes. It's not as you see. Yes. Uh, and I think that's why Turban Thinker is very much, you know, someone said to, you, to me yesterday, you are the turbinator. No, I like that. <laughs> I know. Men like it because it's very male, but you know, yes, we're turbinating that mindset away from these youth yes. to think, you know, no, we can do something and life has got a lot to give. So, so you would you say out? it's mainly in the mindset. I definitely. It's the mindset. And changing mindset is a very difficult yes. thing. What know? amazes me is that I, I would have thought the younger the people are, the easier it is to change the mindset, but I find it's the same. Yeah. You know, actually some older people are more open to changing their mindset because they've gone through pain. Mm, mm. Young people sometimes just want to go through their own process. Yeah. And they we were young too, right? Mm. And I didn't listen. Of course not. Uh, oh God. I never but the same thing is I never had I never had I never had anybody close in my family to advise me. Yeah. Didn't have a dad. Okay. Mom never worked. Mm. So when a third party came, I always thought I had an alternative motive, right? Yeah. So I thought I'm on my own path. I've wasted yes. 20 years. Yeah. I've wasted 20 no, years of my never, life. Yeah. Never a waste. Always a learning, right? That's my excuse now, but of I course. did waste 20 years. I could have listened and saved myself. True, 20 true. Years. But that's one thing never going to change. One thing I want to talk to you about is that something that I really admire. I've never said to you before, uh, before we close this episode for yes. the next one, is that you have an amazing marriage. And Alhamdulillah. I really, really respect you both very, very much. Thank you so much. And um, what's the secret? Because I know that you're very driven. And I know your 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 husband is also an alpha male. Is yes, but um, somehow it works. It works beautifully. Yeah. And I yeah. notice that you're in sync and you're on the same wavelength. And yeah. What's the secret? And the secret. I is really admire that, and I want that in my life, right? Inshallah. So people you know, aren't the, competing. The, sec anymore. the secret, I think, is having absolute respect, pure respect for each other, and there's not. You know, it's interesting when we listen to people saying marriage is a compromise, you know, marriage. Well, actually, it really shouldn't be because if you're with the right person, you should not have just to be compromise. Yourself, right? You must be yourself. And mm -hmm. with Tavis, I'm a thousand percent myself, which is very difficult to live with someone that's like me. Uh, and equally, he's a thousand percent himself. And that means we're not perfect. And when you realize you're not perfect, 
then you're able to deal with each other, right? The, the, which are imperfections because exactly. your and expectations that vulnerability, are yeah, right? Amazing. Exactly. So, and, and but I think that the ultimate thing is that mutual respect of what the other person does. Plus, he's the absolute opposite to me, which is very interesting because I'm fiery. I'm, you know, very. I'm on the go all the time. He's cool and calm. And he's very cool. He's he's fire on the inside, cool mm -hmm. on the outside. Wow. I'm probably fire on he's the controlled. outside, cool on the he's inside. He's controlled. Very. Mm -hmm. And so he's the one that you know uh, tames the panther, right? And that and he's also been a very big problem for many of the groups that I've worked with and people I've met. Because they don't understand, you know, he'll drive me to work every day and pick me up. He will wow. always be there at a meeting. He'll always be waiting. And they don't understand this relationship and it really wow. bothers people. But really, why? I think because they're not comfortable, they don't understand why is he there? Why, why, does, why is he apart? But because he's also a life coach. Yes. And so, you know. It's like, the, sorry, it's like a fighter and their trainer. Yes. Right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so on the way to work when he's driving me, I'm downloading for the day wow. and what I'm doing and he's wow. advising and coaching. Wow. On the way back from, you know, I'm downloading. Reviewing and Because I'm yeah. very stressful in what I do. My mm -hmm. job is very stressful. Yeah, and it's intense. So it's very intense. So I download and then he gives me sort of that, you know, the thoughts on how I should manage. So that's why we're together and because he's excellent as well as a, as a life coach. So he's he's part of everything that I amazing, do. Amazing. Yeah. But so you, how long have you, you know, guys been married? So we've been married now for 15 years and he was married 23 years before that and I was married for 14 years before that amazing. and I had no intent to remarry or, you know, and sometimes, you know, the path is written for you, right? Um, so, so you found your soulmate too. Yeah, you. alhamdulillah. And you know, it's not, it's, marriage is never easy, right? Certainly not. You have to work hard, right? Yes. It's not easy at all, but it does make it a lot easier. Like I said, when you don't have to change who you are, be true to yeah. yourself. I think that's how we can end. And that's, but I'm going to end it. Excuse yeah. me. I'm going to end yeah, it. Yeah, sure, sure. That's you lead. <laughs> you lead. So, <laughs> you lead. Um, okay, let's talk about Turban Thinker. How, how yeah. do people connect with you on there? Yes. Um, please let the audience know. Yes. So basically, uh, we're setting up our website, but they can get to me at asil at asilattar.com. Asil spelled? A-S-I-L at A-S-I-L-A-T-T-A-R dot com. Um, or asil at turbanthinker.com. And then I'll direct them to my team who will tell them about the events, you know, and when we're launching and give them all the details. Amazing. Um, yeah. Amazing. Thank yeah, you. Very exciting. Also, you and I have got some ventures that we're going to work on. True? Yes, we are. Because True. to have you in my life, and I think it's a real, real bonus. Thank you so and, much. And I'm not life. just saying this. I don't. I. I'm an. I'm an introvert. And, yeah. Uh, when sure work you finishes, are. Yeah, no, yeah, really, yeah, yeah. Of really. Of course, that's what. Yeah. But when work finishes, just really? for me home on my own. Mm -hmm. I really like my own space. But yeah. you and I really mean it from my bottom of my heart. Yeah. Is that you want a very few people. That I love spending time with. That's so cool. Because I learn so much. I learn so much from you, and I Thank read. You. And your energy is incredible. Thank you so much. Um, and I would love to invite you back. I love to invite you back in a couple of months. Sure. And then hopefully by that time, no, hopefully, what the hell? Definitely, we got some of our ventures on the go, and yes. we're going to share our successes together. Totally, and we're going to do a fitness challenge. No. That's maybe Please. on episode five. I need a episode partner. Five. Actually, I... today a personal trainer out of the blue contacted me. I was like, hmm, okay. I did a podcast. Let's get someone to sponsor us. Seriously. If they can just like fly on the wall. Should we do our LinkedIn challenge first? Let's do our LinkedIn challenge. Let's okay. do it because I have a plan for that. What we're going to do. Yes. What we're going to do so is cool. uh, to the audience, if I don't mind me sharing. No, go, go, go. Yeah. You have thousands of connections on yes. LinkedIn. I have thousands of connections on LinkedIn. However, we don't know if we really link to them. If True. We're, we're in the same wavelength or not. Right. We get on or anything like this. What I would like you and I to do is to contact our LinkedIn uh, friends Alrighty. and see whether they are they could be our friends, yes or no. Mm -hmm. If we're not in sync, we defriend them. Unfriend them? them. Unfriend them? Uh -uh. Is that what you do? You unfriend un people? Unfriend them. Unfollow, defollow? Unfollow uh, yes. Okay. Do you think that'll be a good one? I think that'd be awesome. We'll, go, we'll do a road show, meeting people. We've I think it'd be to. entertaining. And um, with your permission, and we're going to maybe put some letters together, and start connecting We've with people straight away. This. 
Yes. And I think it's going to be fun. I and, think it's awesome. And also, I think it's going to be a great networking opportunity. <laughs> We're going to meet a lot of people we don't want to know. Yes. A lot of people we do want yes. to know. Yes, it's called filtering. Let's do it. Let's do it. Love you very High much. High five. Love you too. Love Thank you, you too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. It was awesome. Amazing. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.